Hello everyone, this is Kimberly Riggs with K Riggs Art, and today I'm going to talk about charcoal. So I've gotten some really good responses from my um, charcoal portraits that I've posted um, in my time-lapse series. And so I thought I'd talk a little bit about um, what materials I use and how they work. So we're going to start with vine charcoal. This one's my vine charcoal. And this is created using um, or putting grapevines in a kiln with no air and burning them. It's a really soft charcoal and I usually use it to sketch in my initial drawing, um, figure out where my shadows are going to go. It's really light so it's really easy to get rid of and erase. Um, so I will show you how that works. Okay, so here we have the vine charcoal. I'm just going to sketch in a face here. So really lightly get my circle, let's put in the jawline here. Okay, so that is your vine charcoal. So my next um, supply <laughs> is the chamois. So this, when it arrives, is actually a very nice tan colored. It's a very soft um, material and I use this to blend um, blend my charcoal, uh, soften lines, um, a lot of shading. It actually carries quite a bit of charcoal. Um, my fingers are already black from touching it. Um, so I can even use it without putting down charcoal first. So if I want to tone my page before I even start, I'll probably use my chamois. Um, I have several different ones. So this one and this one were both gotten off of um, dickblick.com and um, they work really nicely. I use this one probably the most. Um, this one isn't technically a chamois, it's just a piece of cloth, um, cotton cloth. And I'll especially use it to, um, if I'm not really a fan of what's happening, I'll soften down all the lines and then go back over it takes off more charcoal than it actually puts down, unlike my chamois here that can carry quite a bit of charcoal in it. And so it's nice more as an eraser type object. So we will go back to my little drawing here and show you how these work. Okay, so here I have my <laughs> um, funny little sketch that I did for with my vine charcoal. And you can see how that takes down most of my marks. It tones down my page a lot. But you can still see some of my lines. Um, I've got the basic idea still there. Now, the biggest bulk of my drawing I use charcoal pencils for. Uh, there are a lot of options out there, but I use these um, let's see, General's Charcoal. Let's see. Oh, right there. Um, this one is a 4B soft. I have 4B, 6B, and 2B. Uh, 2B is a medium, not a soft. Now, um, <laughs> you'll notice that they're sharpened kind of funny. Um, this way I have access to both the point for finer lines, and I can easily just turn it on the side and shade in um, without having the wood of the pencil get in the way. And I will show you how I do that. Um, so my 2B I will probably use to sketch in more. Um, 6B, the, as the numbers go up, your um, your pencils are going to get softer, they're going to get darker, and so um, I'll usually start off with a light line um, with my 2B and then move up 4B to 6B, depending on darkness and how I want it to look. So I'll show you these in action, and um, stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll show you how I sharpen them. Okay, so I'm going to start with my 2B medium. And uh, notice I'm holding the pencil overhanded like this. If you hold it like you're writing, you have a lot less control. You can, you mostly get this the tip. If you hold it like this, you can get the tip, you can get the side, you can move it around. You have a lot more versatility to it. And I'm gonna go in and just draw the nose a little bit better here. And 
and I'm shading it in as I go. <laughs> this isn't the best of drawings. Now I'm going to show you. So I can go really light like that, or I can go darker. This is my 4B, um, and it gives me a much softer, much darker line. And then up to my 6B pencil here. Now I'm going to take my cloth chamois and just sort of run it over, soften things down so I can fix mistakes. And then um, I would go on and continue this to perfection how I wanted it. Okay, so besides the chamois and my charcoal pencils, I use kneaded erasers. <laughs> this one's a little hard. I've used it a lot and it's been sitting in the cold for a while. So um, I'm going to work it a little bit, get it softened up. Um, what these do is they actually hold in. They pick up the charcoal and hold it. It's a little like putty. Um, they're really great tools. Uh, you don't end up with a lot of little, little eraser dust. I'm not sure what they're called. Eraser shavings? Um, all over your paper so you don't have to brush those off. And it's really good for lifting out highlights. So it's not just for getting rid of mistakes. Um, I'll often go in with my kneaded eraser and put in where I want my highlights and lighten it up. And so it's almost a process of sculpting an image. So you're laying down your darks, you're building out your lights, and you're sort of carving out this image. Before the, I do that, I'm actually going to take my vine charcoal, darken it down a little bit more so it's a better example. Now, let's see, I'm going to put my highlights right about here. If you find it stops working or you're just picking up too much, or you've picked up too much charcoal, um, you can always fold it over, you can stretch it, you can end up getting a cleaner spot to work with. Now, if I wanted to go in and do some fine details, I can shape it to how I want it. So there, let's see, there, I've got a nice little point. I'm almost going to use it like a pencil. See, as you build up different levels of value, your picture starts coming to life, whether it's a good drawing or not. Um, it starts uh, looking a little more three-dimensional. And you'll notice um, charcoal actually gets into the weave of the paper. And so you won't ever really be able to erase all of it. You can get quite a bit done like that, but you'll always see a little bit of charcoal. So if you really want those bright highlights, you might want to leave some spaces, plan out where you want your lights. Um, or you can just go with this and go with a slightly toned down light. When I finish out a drawing, I like to put a little extra highlight in the spots that I really want to draw attention to. To do that, you can use um, something like this one, which is a white charcoal pencil, or um, which is actually my preference, is um, New Pastel. This one is Prismacolor and it goes on nice and bright. You do want to be careful because it will mix with the charcoal and up, end up with kind of a gray, blurry mess. And so you want to be sparing, you want to plan out where you want your lights, and you want to be careful with how you apply it. Okay, starting out with my charcoal pencil, I'm gonna put a few lights in here. Now that's not actually doing much. It's more blending, um, lightening, my charcoal. So I'm actually going to go in with my new pastel and that'll actually lighten it up quite a bit. Okay, so when I um, finish up a drawing, even before I put in the white, I like to go in with a nice dark um, pastel or uh, stick charcoal and just go in and put in a lot of darks, darken it up. Um, that way my drawing sort of pops forward a little bit. Um, I can add my darks and lights, but this will cover more space and it's actually a much darker um, material than my 6B, 6B pencils. So let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to put this in um, and darken down outside of my person's head here. And I don't like the sketchy lines. Um, some people do. It depends on style and what you want it to look like. But I'm going to go back in with my chamois 
and smooth it out. And as you can see, it does take some of that charcoal off. This does lighten it up a bit. So I would probably go in after this and do yet another layer. Besides the chamois, um, another tool you can use is called a tortillon or um, a stump, blending stump. And they come in different widths. Here's this one is a number five. This one is a lot smaller, it's a number two. You have different lengths. Um, and these are used kind of like pencils, but they're more for blending than anything else. There we go. I showed you only one type of charcoal pencil. There are quite a few different brands, different types. Um, the ones that I use, like I said, are General's charcoal pencils. You can get a box of them. This one is my box of 2B mediums. And there are a lot of different choices and options as to shades and how dark you want to go, um, what brand. Another option for charcoal pencil are these guys. Oops, and I opened the wrong end. Let's try that again. These guys right here. These are called peel and sketch charcoal. They're also from general pencils. And these are pretty cool because you don't actually need to sharpen them the way I'm gonna show you in just a minute. Um, they have this little, little string right here and you can pull it down how far you want. And then you can take the um, paper, I guess. And just wind it and it tears itself off, which is really neat. Save some time in sharpening your pencils. Just like so. And then you've got a nice pencil to work with. All right, so the last thing that I'm going to cover in this video is how I sharpen my pencils. And you don't have to do it this way, but I find it's um, really helpful in um, having more utility in using your pencil, you have more flexibility. Um, so you want to make it, oh, I'm going to go with this one because this is more the right length. You want to make it about an inch long. Now you do want to be careful because once they're like this, they can break a lot easier. Um, but it's a much nicer working surface and you can get some really good points out of it. So to do that, now well, let's see, I've got some dull pencils here that we're going to use. Um, you can use an X-Acto blade. I don't have any good X-Acto blades right now, so I've actually been using a razor blade. Um, even a knife would work. You just want something sharp that can cut the wood nicely. And then to finish it out, I've got these um, little sandpaper pads. So you have a whole bunch of them all stapled onto this little board. So when one gets too full or if it gets worn down, you can tear that off and have a fresh sheet underneath. And this will be the last step and it'll even out your pencil, give you that nice sharp point that you want, that sort of thing. Um, so I'm gonna show you over here on my paper. Decide how long you want your point to be, then take your blade and start shaving off the wood, of course going away from you towards the point. Use the sandpaper to get rid of any ridges you may have cut into the charcoal. It will also help you bring the end to a nice point and smooth out your edges. Okay, so we just sharpened our pencils. With that, we used the sandpaper pad. We used a nice sharp blade. Um, for pencils, we used um, 4B, we used 2B, and 6B of General's charcoal pencils. As another option, we could use these general pencils, um, peel and sketch. They're actually in darker uh, charcoal as well. Um, I recommend that you try a bunch of different types, see what you like, see what works best for you. We started out our drawing with nice soft fine charcoal. Here's the packaging. This one is a Winsor Newton artist charcoal and it comes with three pieces and you have different types you can do extra soft soft medium and hard this one is soft and then of course 
we've got our three chamois. You don't have to use all three. You can even use just one or none. But I tend to use all three of these. And then I have my pastel. Um, you can also use stick charcoal. I've got my kneaded eraser here. I've got my tortillon or blending sticks. All sorts of different shapes and styles. And then I've got my whites. I've got actually four different types here. I've got the Prismacolor New Pastel. I've got Durant Burnisher. I've got Stabio Carb Othello. And I have Generals again, Charcoal White. And while we're at it, I'm actually gonna throw these in as an option. These are Dollar Round, <laughs> Dollar Rowney, hard to say. Um, and they're actually chalk pastels in shades of gray. But they're another really nice option. Those are my supplies. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. Um, I just recommend that you try all sorts of things, see what you like. Every artist is different, so every artist likes to use different materials, different styles, but uh, this is what I use. Okay, um, since I have all of these supplies out, I'm actually going to start recording for my next time-lapse um, drawing video and um, probably use most of these. If you have any other questions, if you want to see other materials that I use, how they work, um, styles, let me know in the comments. Uh, thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and we'll see you guys in two weeks. Thanks, bye.